Charterman, Charterman Rhyme Charterman, Charterman, Charterman Rhyme Greedy comics, twins are hella sick Hell whackin' it, take a bad hit Take a bad hit, Charterman Subscribe Machine for the domains Last we have the Pepper Potter Hey, what's up you guys? Shardinus Prime here, doing another DC Comics action figure review on the Beast Kingdom Justice League movies 8-inch scale Steppenwolf. If you're trying to pick this up, you can do so at Big, Big, Big. Get your big badass toys at BigBadToyStore.com. Click the link in the description below. Now this is the first time I've picked up an 8-inch scale figure from Beast Kingdom. I've reviewed the Egg Attack figures, but yeah, this is my first time looking at one of these and it looks pretty good so far. A lot of accessories in there. On the side, it just says DAH010 Steppenwolf 19th scale action figure. A couple of product shots right over here on the back. And then right down here, it says what the figure includes and the accessories and what, you know, the articulation and all that. And then it says DAH010 Justice League up there. And not much more at the bottom. So let's get to it and crack this thing open. And here's Steppenwolf out of the packaging. Looking pretty awesome with his big heavy axe. And I'll get into that in just a moment. But looking at just the aesthetics of this figure, it looks pretty pretty good to me. I'm liking the design of this figure too. It does look a little bit more film accurate uh, than the Mattel figure and we'll get into the comparisons and whatnot of that Collect and Connect Steppenwolf compared to this Beast Kingdom version. Uh, we do have a number of accessories that come with this figure so let's take a closer look at those and then we'll take a closer look at Steppenwolf. So here's all the accessories that we get with Steppenwolf and unfortunately I'm not the biggest fan of the stand that we get with this figure. It's the same size stand as uh, we see with the Egg Attack figures which are really small so we get this very small stand for a fairly large figure a nice clean print right here with the Justice League and it says Steppenwolf uh, you get a ratchet joint right here at the bottom you could rotate it right there and you could hinge this up and down and rotate and then you have these clamps right over here so that's the stand which I have not really used once for this figure so a bit unfortunate with the stand uh, he does have several interchangeable hands four pairs and they're all painted really well and they look pretty good you can see the fisted hands right here and I like how the fingernails are painted on all of them and then he has the axe holding hands right now look pretty good then he has two different sets of wide open hands which is kind of cool you know you can have him choking different people you know or this could be a choking hand and this could just be a wide open hand but I do like the interchangeable hands that come with this figure and I also do like the axe uh, I love the way it looks man that looks awesome as hell I love all the details that we're seeing in it that is great. I like how it kind of looks like it's lit up right over here too as it did in the movie and same thing with the red right there. And the details throughout the handle and everything look great too. And it is also made out of die cast as you could hear right there, you know. Uh, I think Jobby the Hung has the cold touch technique. I go by the sound, right, you could hear. And then plastic down here. You know, it's pretty hefty uh, and it's a little pointy, not too sharp. But I really do like the way it looks. It's just kind of overbearing for the figure. And I'll get into the articulation a little bit more. But yeah, it gets very tricky for him to hold this without his arms drooping down. It's just a bit too heavy for this guy. Now, of course, you can get him holding the Mattel version right here, which I don't like as much as this version. You know, this just looks a whole lot better to me, a lot more details. It just looks cooler overall. But this is lighter, and it should be a lot easier for the figure to carry. And it will fit into the hands that come with this Beast Kingdom figure. Too. So here's a look at the head sculpt and I think it looks pretty good. I think it bears the likeness of Steppenwolf from the movie. Uh, you can see that we do get a bit of a black wash over his face. I wish there was a little bit more of a consistency throughout though, like on the left side of his nasty little chin right there you can see, you know, some black paint. We don't get as much black paint right there. So I think it could use a little bit more black paint but I still like it. Nice looking sculpt and I really like how this helmet looks too. That is awesome. I love the fade right there with the red and silver and blue. And pretty cool with the sculpted detail on there as well. Very pleased with that. So that's pretty awesome. Nice look at the profile shot right there. So not too bad of a Steppenwolf. Uh, to compare it to uh, the DC Multiverse version right there, you can see that one. And you can see it's just a little bit bigger. Now if you're curious if you could do some head swapping, you actually can do that. And I'm getting that DC head sculpt on there and it works out pretty well. It doesn't look too bad. A little inconsistent, you can see that the multiverse version has a little bit more paint on it of course. But yeah, that looks pretty good. You know, So if you prefer this head sculpt or the helmetless version and you want to put it on the Beast Kingdom figure, you can do that. Putting the head back on 
but getting the head that belongs to the figure back on there and looking at the rest of this piece, I really do like it. And I did put the movie back on just to double check, and yeah, this is all a lot more film accurate uh, compared to what we saw with the official version from Mattel. So you could see this is all kind of a different design. This is more of how he looked in the movie, and I do like that. I like the little gashes and everything in the armor. It has this very cool cast iron look to it. Nice little indentations throughout right there and texturing. Same thing with the texturing right over here. That's all film accurate stuff. Just not lined up 100% correctly though. I don't know if that's on purpose or not. I guess I didn't check when I was looking at images if this lines up perfectly, but it looks like it's supposed to, so that's a little unfortunate. But looking at the shoulder pad right here, I really like how the paint looks. I like that purple fading into silver and we get blue on the back right there. So yeah, the chain mail looks great throughout. Now you can see the joints coming through. And that's one thing I'm gonna kind of complain about is how the joint system works on the figure overall. It's a bit gappy. Definitely feels a bit gappy and you know, the joints are a bit loose. But I'll get more into that in just a moment. Looks pretty cool. And then looking at the skirt piece, it's made of a very soft material. You can shift it up and down. You can see more chain mail underneath right there. Looks great. I love how the silver and gunmetal gray looks throughout on this thing. Nice paint apps through and through. You know, if you end up not liking this figure, at least you can appreciate the paint apps. And yeah, there's what I'm talking about, you know, some real badge right there. But looking at the legs, like all the little swirlies and all that stuff, looks really cool. I'm digging the paint apps, man. And the boots look really cool right here too. I love how the blue and purple, you know, come out together like that. And no peg holes at the bottom of the feet. And then here's a look at the back again. You can see, you know, the joints, the plastic is clearly different from the rest of the figure. Then there's a Steppenwolf butt. And then here's looking at the back one more time. So I like the articulation on this figure, but I'm also disappointed with the articulation at the same time. Uh, you can get the head moving up quite a bit. So that's not too bad. I like that. He can look up that far and he'll look down that much. You also get side to side motion and a great amount of head tilting. Uh, you don't get much on the butterfly joints right here. You can see it'll shift forward and back right there just a little bit and it shifts up and down. Uh, you also get shoulders that can move outward on, well, full 90 degrees, so that's not too bad. And you can rotate a full three, uh, pops off. You can rotate 360 right there. It looks like there's supposed to be a bicep swivel in there, but I don't see that moving at all. I tried making each of them move and it feels like it's gonna break or something and you know that pops off before I get that joint to move. And as far as elbows go, uh, you only get a single jointed elbow that doesn't even reach the 90 degree mark, so that's disappointing. Uh, you also get a wrist swivel right there and you can move it up and down or side to side It's on a ball joint you get an ab crunch forward a little bit not too bad And it can move back a bit you get good diaphragm pivoting you can turn side to side uh, The waist joint can turn side to side a tiny little bit of waist pivoting right there And it'll move forward a little bit and back just a little bit uh, the hips do shift up and down So you can see them shift up and down right there and you can move them outward just that far It'll kick ah dang it. Yeah, see the joints pop off on this thing a lot easier than I'd like them to. Fortunately, they pop right back in. Uh, but yeah, you can move them forward that much, back that much, you get an upper thigh swivel, double jointed knees, super gappy right there at the knee joint. And then the ankle is pretty limited. You can move it down just some and it pops off so easily. Uh, you can move it up a little bit too without it popping off, but just a tiny, tiny bit. Yeah, see it keeps popping off on me. You get side to side motion right there and ankle pivot as well as toe articulation. Now to measure out this Steppenwolf figure, you can see that he is standing just a little under 10 inches tall. And then for your Steppenwolf comparison, we have our Beast Kingdom figure next to the Collect and Connect from Mattel. And the Mattel figure is a bit taller, but this, I like the frame a little bit more so, and I like the paint apps. I think the overall design looks a lot more film accurate. Now I did want to show this off swapping some of the parts really quick, and I just wanted to see how the Collect and Connect head would look on the figure from farther away along with the Collect and Connect axe. And then you can see I put the Beast Kingdom head and axe on the Collect and Connect, and this actually looks kind of cool like that. I, I think I like the head sculpt on the Beast Kingdom figure just a little bit more. I don't know. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And then here's the Beast Kingdom Steppenwolf next to my Justice League figures in my collection. This is what I'm going with anyway. I have the Multiverse Aquaman and the Multiverse Cyborg. I do have the Figure Arts, or it's the Mafex Cyborg coming in the mail, so I'll review that shortly. I did cancel my order on uh, the Mafex Aquaman though. And then I do have the Mafex Wonder Woman right here, the Mesco Batman, the Mesco Superman, and the SH Figure Arts Flash. And then here's a Steppenwolf figure next to your average six inch scale figure. We have the Marvel Legends Big Time Letdown Spider Man. Ooh, cool looking axe. Hey, do you think I can hold it for a second? Thank you. Oh, wow. Here, I'll just pick it up right here. Oh, man, that's a heavy axe. 
And I gotta thank you guys again for watching my video, especially those of you that watch from the very beginning to the end. I really do appreciate it. It really does help out this YouTube channel quite a bit, as well as when you hit that like button. Leave your comment down below, and please subscribe, as well as hit that notification bell if you have not already. And I want to give another special thank you to the patrons that support this channel at the highest level. I really do appreciate it. You guys have a bunch of giveaways over there. Check it out if you're interested. This is a very cool looking figure, man. I do like this figure a lot. My biggest gripe with it is the heavy axe, though. I, I put that in the stop motion for a reason. Uh, that's the biggest problem I have with it. The articulation does bug me here and there, but for the most part, I am very happy with how the articulation came out. It is definitely way more articulated than the Collect and Connect, so it's definitely a lot more fun than that one. Uh, and the paint apps on this are spectacular. I love the paint apps on this piece, too. I like the paint apps on the Collect and Connect also, but this one just looks better overall to me, even though it's a little bit shorter. So I'm giving it a sud rating of... It's not so bad. And I'm curious to know what you guys think. Also, take into account the price point. I believe this guy's about 65 bucks, and 65 bucks for a Collect and Connect, assuming that you're going to replace this with the Collect and Connect, isn't really too bad at all. So yeah, not a bad piece, man. But anyway, if you want to see the latest in toy news, you can find it all over at ToyNewsEye.com. And if you want to stay in touch with me on the social media, you can follow me on the Instagram, Twitter, and Twitch. Links to everything in the description below. I'll catch you guys later. Peace! Hey, new Shark Miss Prime videos. Hey, you should click one. Yeah, click on one of them. Or subscribe if you haven't.